Good afternoon again, everyone. So I will be uh, walking through about our enterprise architecture certification program that we are very fortunate with the support from the government as well as together working with PICOM so we can offer a so-called uh, valuable training with a global reputation, global uh, standard, and so been, uh, the outcome of the training has been proven in the last uh, 15 years. All right, so with that, uh, let me just uh, briefly introduce who we are. I think we started off, uh, many of us, I think many of you heard about uh, our company. We started off as a training company back in 2006. Since then, we have grown up into a company providing uh, lots of world-class consulting in the area of enterprise architecture. So we carry all the uh, distributor for the an accredited training provider for ISA certification in all the domains that I will walk through uh, shortly. And also the open group uh, for those Archimedes and also the Toga BA and also the governance from uh, ISACA and COVID and also uh, DevOps as well as the ITIL from Excelos. And actually our objective or our vision in, uh, in terms of the, our company is that we want to help the organization to create a digitally connected enterprise so that we can see the impact directly from any strategy change, directly impact to the business to the information, to the application, and to the technology. I mean, this type of the impact analysis is very, very critical in the two-day uh, digital transformation because we are living in a complex world. So we need to know exactly the impact and also the dependency that are required for us to be uh, successful in executing the transformation. Yeah, That's why enterprise architecture playing a critical role here. And a little bit about ISA. So basically, some of you heard about the ISA. So ISA actually founded in 2002. So now it's about uh, coming to the almost uh, 19 years old. So it's the association uh, focusing on the development of uh, enterprise architecture profession. And the members, I think, is one of the largest in the world, especially mostly the members are 95% are individual. Yeah? And so ISA developed what they call it ITABOK, Architecture Body of Knowledge. And of course, it's non-profit. Yeah, so it's all driven by the volunteers. I think we have the chapters in Malaysia too. Already a uh, chapter started since uh, 2008. Yeah, so it's already about almost 12 years, 13 years in Malaysia. And I think run by all the architect professional. And we're focusing a lot on the how to create a better uh, value or advancement on in terms of the career for architects. Yeah, so the architects uh, the encompasses uh, those business architects, information architect, some they call it data architect. Then the next one is software architect, some call it application architect, then infrastructure, and as well as solution architect. Yeah, so we will talk about it uh, role shortly. In terms of the discovery uh, by ISA, actually uh, enterprise architecture is a profession, it's not a role. Meaning is that we can train someone, we can form or we can guide someone to become architects, right? Nobody born as an architect. I don't believe anyone born as an architect. So basically can be trained. Like, you know, nobody born as a doctor, but we can train someone to become a medical doctor. Same thing with the architects, yeah? And the way that the ISA development on the body of knowledge is that is the collection of the best practices from all over the world of architect practitioners. So basically, ISA didn't do a research in terms of the, in the lab to develop something, but it's just a collecting, right? Because in your career path of working for 20 years or 30 years or 10 years, there must be something that you think, oh, I found the so-called the sweet spot or I found the right way to do things. And this way uh, has been documented and captured into the body of knowledge. Yeah, so this is the, the development of ITABOK. And of course, ITABOK itself, it will to offer to become a training and certification, they have to go through the qualitative and quantitative analysis so that uh, we can offer the training with the world-class uh, standard content and examination and also a uh, certification program. This is just a so-called industry drive that uh, Gartner says about enterprise architecture. You know, uh, EA is a gateway for a digital transformation. So gateway means without the gateway, we cannot enter into the, the area. So gateway is a keyword. Gartner has been a strong advocate on the importance of EA in driving digital transformation. And of course, uh, Gartner predict 2019 as well that saying that EA has become a internal management consultancy. So meaning we can provide advice to the senior management in terms of the direction, in terms of the strategy to the what is good for the organization. And other analysts, of course, they associate architects with the transformer, right? I think you watched the transformer before. So the car can turn into a robot and can turn into the warship and etc. Yeah, so architect has the ability to do that. And this doesn't make a lot of sense because I've implemented a lot in the real project and I can see the transformation like the transformer is real, right? So 
The title of this topic is not come out from the imagination, but is from the actual experience of those architects that has implemented EA successfully. And of course, EA can also be used to leverage the disruption. I think disruption is quite annoying, like today in the you know COVID-19 era. So our business are disrupted, right? So if we have enterprise architecture, how can we can cushion the impact so that we don't get a bad shock, but we can have a small shock. And of course, to drive innovation, I think that's the very, very key. Because today, you know, in the era of the this COVID, many organizations also will be going away and some also will be born. So how can we drive and continue the innovation? And of course, this is a strong demand for architects, right? I think like in Singapore itself, I think yesterday I did the search around almost I think 5,000 uh, jobs opening today that require enterprise architecture skill set, right? It doesn't mean that the organization hire full-time architects, but they require someone who know the architecture. Okay, about 5,000 job opening as of yesterday. Uh, so it's everywhere. The demand is uh, has been uh, sparing uh, not only in uh, Asia but across the globe because to drive the transformation. And of course, you know why EA is the new secret weapon. Huh? It's uh, very powerful if you have the person or the team that are doing the architects for your organization. And of course, the scale skill set in the big demand. So everywhere, right? It's very, very difficult to get uh, hiring a good architect. You need to be qualified. You need to have enough experience. And this is also another uh, happening in our show in uh, Malaysia. So uh, MyGov EA is uh, one of the so-called catalysts to drive uh, uh, the whole government towards a uh, kerajaan digital. Right. So they are using the MyGov EA that established in 2015. I think now has been going strong and continue and be more and more uh, agency and ministry going ahead to establish the enterprise architecture so that we can have a connected government, connected uh, agency so that we can have uh, the people, the, the rakyat can have a better life. And also I think the good news on the uh, by Bank Negara is all. So Bank Negara is uh, doing uh, risk management for IT. So one of the way to reduce the risk, to manage the risk is by uh, establishing enterprise architecture. Okay, so this is something uh, quite good because very positive. This actually, if you see at the bottom there, is 19 June 2020, right? So this is uh, basically is about six months, and uh, this one become a mandatory. So there will be more and more all the FSI, the insurance company, about 120 of them, I think, in Malaysia registered under Bank Negara need to establish architecture. So the demand is there, right? That's why you are attending this uh, webinar so that. You can see after you attend uh, this type of certification where you can uh, get your career and partner. And of course, PCOM, I think uh, this is where the, we are talking about that. I mean, PCOM has adopted enterprise architecture into their academy, right? Acknowledging the importance of the skill set on the in driving digital transformation. Okay. So what is actually the definition of architects, right? I think we can borrow the definition from the building and medicine. So actually there are two components. The first one is the art and the science. So this is where you need to combine both. You cannot just good at science, you lack of the artistic part, because if that the case, then you cannot become a good doctor. You cannot become a good architect. The same thing with the enterprise architect. So you need to combine both the art and science of designing and delivering valuable technology strategy for the business. This is very, very important. And enterprise architect, who do you deal with in your day-to-day -day operation? Of course, you need to also cover the business team, right? So some of us, maybe we are too technical and we say, oh, talk to business, let my boss talk to them. No, you need to be a uh, step forward and then you need to be able to uh, interact and communicate with the business. Likewise with the technical team, right? asking for the uh, advice or coaching or the direction. So we need or advisory. We need to be able to advise them and guide them. And to the management team, we need to show the value, right? the KPI, the progress that we are doing. And then of course, the roadmap that we are going to uh, achieve. To the vendor and supplier so that we can control what are the uh, relevant technology that we can adopt today. And also to the stakeholders in terms of managing the expectation. This is very, very important. Many projects in the past that I have seen in my life fail, not because of the ability to deliver, but you don't manage the stakeholder well. So the stakeholder terminate your project, right? For no reason. Because this is also one of the key important skill set that you need to master. And of course, with the industry body, right? Like PICOM, ISA, etc. So we need to be able to uh, uh, associate and have a good collaboration with all the industry body and all government association. And of course, who can become an architect? I mean, uh, in the past, of course, anyone has more than 10 years and you need to perform various roles, right? You need to know about the, how the development team work, how the project management team work, how deployment team work, how the system analysts work and etc. And this is the irony of the third requirement. You also need to be failing in a couple of large IT projects and burn million and you are not in the Kajang prison. 
right? You never see anyone fail IT project go into the prison. So this is something that are uh, quite uh, disheartening, right? Because many uh, technology project actually not progressing well. So that's why we need to have a fix, right? And that's why the enterprise architecture is coming in handy here. So it's basically providing a uh, value for those who want to understand about uh, business technology relationship. So anyone can be trained as an enterprise architect today. And of course, by mastering this type of skill, you don't need to be 10 years. So you, can, you don't need to be a so-called a very good programmer, but you have a holistic view. And from there, we can uh, so-called the ISA can guide you, to train you up to become the architects. And this is actually is the framework for the so-called uh, education itself, right? For architect itself, we know the mandate. The mandate is at the outer layers. If you see the outer layers, they got all type of transformation, right? Thought leadership transformation, uh, skill set transformation, digital business transformation, operational model transformation, information transformation, etc. So if you want to drive the transformation at the outside, then you need to have a very good uh, so-called framework to execute. Yeah? That's why the architect is playing a critical role to drive the mandate, to drive the architect and also drive the outcome. Yeah, and this is the role of the business architect. Let me just uh, go through the architect uh, domain specialization. They got infrastructure architect, information architect, solution architect, software, as well as the business architect. So what is actually the business architect role definition? So business architect uh, create and refine business architecture and own the business technology strategy. This is something very, very uh, unique because if you see, you heard in the past that they got the business strategy or technology strategy, but here we are talking about business technology strategy. This is exactly the context of our digital transformation today. Digital transformation today, we cannot just transform the business, but we need to be supported by the technology. So basically, we need to be able to uh, work together between business and technology and combine them into a digital strategy. Right? That's why a business architect sometimes is also called digital strategies that knows the technology as well as the business. And of course, they should be able to get the feel in terms of the how to troubleshoot the enterprise on the potential uh, application or technology that may impact or uh, bring uh, so-called dependency to the business capability. This is the path of the training, right? So I will be at the end of the, this uh, presentation, I'll be uh, briefly describing on each of the uh, so-called uh, courses. Yeah, so basically the path is that uh, if you can see here, they got the fundamental skill. So it started off with the business architecture fundamental at the bottom, then go to architecture core. Then you can look at the organization level like a toga for Archimede. Then after that, you go into the business technology strategy. As a prerequisite before you are being certified as one of the specialization in business architect, information architect, infrastructure, software, and solution. Okay. So at the end of this presentation, I'll be uh, describing briefly each of the boxes here. Then for information architect, what we call it data architects. Okay. So basically, information architect create and refine uh, information architecture and on the data dictionary or taxonomy governance. So basically, uh, the someone who has the information architect, they understand all the taxonomy, all the data information that we have, the format, and how the interchange among the so-called various systems. Sometimes we call this uh, specialization is the information strategies. They design an information structure to support the business. This is very, very important. The information structure can be turned into a so-called decision-making tool because business need to make a decision based on the data. So this is where the information architecture playing a critical role. Of course, some of you may ask, what's the difference between data scientists? Well, data scientists, if you see at the programming level, they are software engineer. And software architect is the next level. So information architect is overarching because information architect need to have in-depth knowledge on the business technology strategy as well as can go down into the so-called information structure. Yeah, whereby the data scientist is understanding the business and execute in terms of the uh, formatting, in terms of the data exchange and exchanges and etc. Yeah. So a bit overlapping, but they are playing at the different role between uh, you know principal software engineer and software architects. Yeah. So totally a two different field. So information architect is also we call it sometimes information troubleshooter to detect potential data inconsistency that may impact business decision making process. That's very very important. In the business is that they need to get the data and they need to make the right decision based on the information available. That's why the information architect uh, providing exactly that platform. So the path is pretty similar with the business architect, except they are ending at the information architecture specialization. The next one is software architect. So software architect, uh, basically is someone who create and refine software architecture and on the application components and connectivity. So software architect is an application strategist and design the application pattern to support the business. 
because in the past is that we have many many applications so now how can we connect them right the key is that we turn it into a component and we connect them right make it loosely coupling and of course a software architect is also called an application troubleshooter on the potential silo system that may impact business process flow. So at the end of the day, we need to have a connected or integrated business process flow. So the path at the bottom there, they go through another course like architecting software with OAD and UML. And then after that, they go through the same path and then ending up at the software architecture specialization. The next is the infrastructure architecture specialization. So if a software architect uh, create and reminds uh, infrastructure architecture and on the server topology, network infrastructure, data center with a compute environment. So they know about all the necessary to make it a green data center, for instance. And of course, it's also called a technology strategies because design the technology landscape or the platform yeah, to support the business. And sometimes we call it technology troubleshooter and they understand all the potential disruption. That's why we call it like business continuity plan. So infrastructure architect is responsible to design or to support or to realize the business continuity plan. So the path is pretty similar with other uh, specialization, except they're ending up at the infrastructure architect specialization. Then the last role is the solution architect. Okay? So solution architect is very unique. Solution architect is the architect you typically assign into a project. Right, just also does not go business architect, information architect, software and uh, infrastructure. That architect is developing the so called the blueprint and the artifacts, whereby the social architect is where you assign this person inside the project. So, your project nine months, social architect will be parked there. But typically, you don't uh, park full time. So, normally, uh, one architect can handle uh, up to five projects. Yeah. So, a uh, social architect create and refine social architecture and on the system implementation governance. And also we call it IT strategies, right? Because they understand the solution, they understand the vendor solution, and they are basically uh, involved in the system development and deployment and implementation to support the business. And of course, we sometimes we call the, this person is the system troubleshooter that can assess a potential discrepancy between architecture and the system being implemented, again, to support the business. So the path is pretty similar with the software, except they're ending up in the solution architect. Yeah? So, yeah, I will be going through the, the topic uh, shortly after this, right? So, basically, this is where I'll be sharing uh, on the so-called the courses one by one. So, the first one is the three days business IT architecture fundamental. Okay, in summary, this course is about business IT integration. Because sometimes we don't understand, if you're from the business team, you don't understand what's IT team thinking. Why they are behaving like that? Why they, they don't know about this? The same thing now, if you ask the business team, yeah, business team is so frustrating. Say, why the business team cannot do this? Yeah? Why? How come they don't know? How come they only bring up this information now? Should have informed us last month, uh, something like that, right? That's why the Pita course is creating alignment between business and IT so that they can understand the challenges each other. And not only that, so they can create a common communication platform, right? How do you capture the requirement? How do you define the requirement and etc. So Pita is a very, very popular training course. I think it's one of the number one most popular, especially when you are trying to work together between business and IT team. So the topics, I think the course outline, they want basically to understand the challenges about what do you typically face in the typical challenges when you capture the requirement. And then on the day two, to understand about what is the way, how can we use a requirement architecture? Okay, so day three is more on the how to create a template, to create a, a good communication platform between the two teams, business and IT. Yeah? And this one, of course, come with the certification and the exam. The next one is architecture core. Okay, so architecture core is quite interesting. It's the four days training. So basically, it will uh, span off across 14 uh, workshop, right? So the workshop actually giving you so-called prescriptive guidance, how you can implement architecture. So you can imagine in the first workshop is that you'll be assigned to the particular organization. And the organization basically is firefighting. Right? I think it's very common, firefighting, the IT blame business, the business blame IT, and then the CFO trying to cut the IT budget. That's the disaster. Okay, So now, how can you come in as the architects, newly formed team, and you deliver value, you communicate value, you establish architecture? So this is the course all about. It's very, very interesting because in the out of the 14 uh, workshop, they got two workshops that basically someone backstabbing us. Someone said, all things happen because of architecture fault. Right, So we get blamed. How do we survive about it? So this is the course that are quite interesting and I think you learn the most. Many of our participants actually after attending this course, they said, oh, I wish I could attend this 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Okay, because what the 14 workshop that we go through, I've gone through that in my life. 
and this course giving me a prescriptive guidance on how to overcome the day-to-day -day real life challenges so this uh so called the module yeah, from the day one two three and four okay so it's pretty interesting if you have a chance you should take it up uh, this course the next one is on the business technology strategy so business technology strategy in the short term is like the mba in four days so if you have taken the mba it's pretty similar but this one is tailored specifically for in the context of adopting or technology adoption right if you see many of uh, it people who can climb to the top typically if you ask them they have the MBA degree somehow or somewhere in their life they substitute their so-called business equipment with the MBA knowledge master in business administration so this course exactly that because they, you can understand about business structure business driver about the technology strategy business strategy and after profit and loss why we deliver value how to manage stakeholder communication so all these are covered in this training Okay. So this is also one of the most high impact training, BTS. And this BTS is the prerequisite training before you can take any of the specialization in the business, information, software, infrastructure, as well as the solution. So in the BTS itself, they got uh, all the modules that uh, will be covered. Then the next one is on the business architecture specialization. So this one basically is about sharing about how can we choose a perspective in terms of uh, how we define the value stream, how we calculate the ROI for IT project, how we can uh, basically understand the requirement, vision, strategy, and etc. Okay, so this architecture basically looking at the how can we look at the entire business uh, needs, business aspect, business context, and also how to drive the business valuation. Because at the end of the day, why we adopt the technology, we treat it as an investment. So this cost uh, this specialization training give us that perspective so we have a so-called specialization uh, uh, topics right in terms of the day one day two day three and day four so it's pretty much understanding the process finance uh, business architecture goals and the strategy the next one information or data architecture specialization so basically it's looking at the how to manage or to define the information structure for the business so we are looking at the stories, we are looking at the design, we are looking at the presentation, we are looking at the retrieval as well as how to do um, governance, data governance, data custodian, and etc. Uh, so basically looking at all the aspects in terms of the information as a strategy, information usage, data integration, data quality, and advanced information management topics. The next one is will be uh, on the infrastructure architecture. So this is also one of the popular costs. And in fact, we have trained a lot of the uh, core team for the government in terms of the how can we uh, prepare uh, support the team to support the DevOps or cloud migration, etc. So this one basically uh, give us the understanding in terms of the what are the right platform to support the business uh, continuity plan. So the topic about data center infrastructure, application management system, design pattern and model framework, and also uh, life cycle so the next one is software architecture so software architecture is basically about all the design pattern about all the what is the best way to deploy the system to support and also to so that we can have the so-called a good uh, ease of maintenance yeah and how to communicate software design as well so we look at the, of course the software construction component framework service network architecture process and throughout the life cycle as well so the next one is solution architects yeah solution architect is quite unique so in this course uh, typically is that you will learn a, a, a holistic in terms of the business information infrastructure as well as software because what happened is that if you see the topic right module one is about social architecture overview then module two go to the business architecture then after that you understand that describing the solution that can fulfill the business architecture then we go to information architecture software infra and the life cycle okay so this course basically is a uh, someone who has the holistic view of all the four domain that's why a solution architect need to have this comprehensive holistic knowledge because solution architect is the one that will be assigned into the project okay of course the joke is that now, if in organization you have the solution architect, typically this guy will be called in to do anything, right? You cannot print printer jam as a call solution architect because there's solution. Right? And in fact, now the vendor also abuse. Anything that you want to sell uh, the pre-sales, they don't call it pre-sales, they call it solution architect. So basically they cover everything A to Z under the planner. Architect here in the contract is that someone that you assign into the IT project and they understand uh, how to translate business information, infrastructure and software architecture to turn it a solution.